So what other ways can we potentially look at improving rocket technology? What is the next leap? Can we actually change the way a normal rocket, so to speak, works? Yeah, so I mean, I think in the next few years, we're going to see the normal rocket pushed down in price. Yep. Uh, SpaceX is certainly continuing to innovate. Yep. There are various rivals, all of whom are far behind. That's SpaceX right. is a mean competitor, but uh, that might well happen. I imagine the Chinese will bring their price yes. down quite a lot. Uh, so that's going to be driven probably about as low as it can. To go do better than that, we have some quite different technologies, burning chemical fuels in it's, a rocket. It's just not that efficient long And we've term. seen that space planes, the complexity probably makes them uncompetitive. That's right. Uh, so one approach, in all our rockets so far, we've used the rocket fuel for two things. Yep. First of all, it's the source of energy. Yep. And secondly, it's the mass you throw out the back. That's right. But what if you separate the two, have a different source of energy? So a different source of energy to, gener to have it and then a different sort of mass that you're essentially throwing at the back to you're give you... You're still going to need to have mass to throw out the back and you can have energy to accelerate it. But they don't, ha they they don't have, have to be the same thing. That's right. And there are two approaches here. There's the ion drive and the nuclear thermal approach. Okay. So the ion drive, the idea is that you have a solar-powered spacecraft. Okay. And what happens is the solar power is used to electrically accelerate a small amount of gas, maybe xenon, yep. to an incredibly high speed. Okay. You basically charge it, ionize it, and put it between electric plates to accelerate it up to enormous speeds. That's there right. Are various ways to do it, including some research here at ANU. Yes. And the benefit of this is that you can fire your gas out at absolutely enormous speeds. That's right. And if you remember the rocket equation, that f speed is the all important. Exactly. What allows you to drive it. The trouble is that the power you get from your solar cells is not that great. No, that's right. I mean, you can get a few thousand watts per square meter, but that's compared to the amount of power from burning yeah. a swimming tank every 10 seconds worth of rocket fuel. That's pretty epoxy. This is not going to lift you off the Earth's surface. There's no way you can get enough energy from solar cells to get enough thrust to carry your own weight up. So could you use it in a different environment then? Yes, yeah, so what it's used for is once you've got something in space, then you've got all the time in the world. That's instance, true. Unless you've got people on your rocket. But if it's an unmanned rocket, you can then get this very small thrust going. But this, these spacecraft can keep this thrust going for like days and weeks and months because the solar power's not going to run out. Exactly. You're only firing out very small amounts of gas, so a tiny uh, canister it's, it's of gas. It's a tiny volume, yeah, that's right. Because it's fired out so fast. So this is what iron drives are useful for. They're not going to be useful for putting people in space. But, but once you're in space on a chemical rocket, then they're going to be quite useful and principally very efficient to move around from one orbit to another, to go and rendezvous with a different... That's right. <laughs> Indeed, SpaceX uses ion drives on its Starlink satellites for exactly this purpose. So exactly. Launch on a Falcon 9, but then maneuver with an ion drive. So it's kind of a combination with some of the existing technology to improve getting some of those further places, like those orbits we talked about before, but you still need lots of amount of energy to go transfer to them. Yes, so this is, I think, really coming into its own now. Yeah. But again, it's not going to launch things from the Earth's surface. Okay. What can launch things from the Earth's surface is a nuclear thermal rocket. Okay, so I assume you have some sort of nuclear reactor in here? That's right. So you have your gas, yep. probably hydrogen. So you, you can now pick it purely for it being the best thing to fire out the back. You don't yep. have to worry about how much chemical energy you get out of it. Yep. And you have turbo pumps as before. But now instead of combining a fuel and an oxidizer, you put the, not, I shouldn't call it a fuel, the reaction mass, yes. the hydrogen, yeah. through a, in this case, a nuclear reactor core. Okay. And that gets it very hot. Yes. So it's making the same purpose as the combustion would. Yep. And then it flows out the back and it's very hot and Away you shoots go. off the way you go. Um, and other than that, it's the same. It's got the same turbo pumps. It's got the same. But because cooling. you're so you're essentially saving though here on fuel. Is that it? That we're not having the complication of the oxidizer as well as our fuel source. That's right. But the main benefit is that nuclear power is you get a lot more power in a very small space. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, a nuclear fission reactor, the sorts we're talking about here, can generate vastly more energy in, in the size of your fist than burning huge amounts of fuel. So in principle, this can run things up to much higher temperatures yep. um, and with much less mass. You still need a reaction mass to fire at the back, but you can get far more energy into that reaction mass. And so this is reducing what we're calling our dry mass component of that rocket equation, which ultimately is making us go 
faster ultimately or more energy yeah. in the space. So the velocity you can squirt the gas out from these, I mean this was actually being built. Yep. This is the Nerva engine which was, it wasn't launched into space but was certainly test fired numerous times and it was and these sort of things could quite straightforwardly get um, the, the ejection velocity that's 50% uh, or 100% bigger than chemical fuel rockets. Yep. And that makes an enormous difference. It does. It makes a colossal difference. And in particular, I think NASA has recently announced again at the time of filming this, they want to look at specifically on these to Mars because it's all about getting more speed and therefore shortening that time and energy, which as we saw with Mars, takes a vast amount of time energy to get there. And they were researched and these things were test fired back in the 60s and early 70s. But then with the cuts of budget, yeah. Uh, it was felt that there was no particular point. And, and of course, the big worry about this is what happens if it blows up during takeoff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've seen rockets do blow up during takeoff. That's and, right. And, and blowing and up a nuclear <laughs> reactor is probably not the best option. And the general N word, nuclear, yes. is uh, going to get the public uh, definitely against you. That's right. So it's uh, going to be a tricky sell. But in principle, this is, can be drastically better than anything chemically powered, even by Elon Musk.